Dream Farm fans. Well, it's a wild, exciting day. It's like September 29th or 30th. And September is sort of trying to be hay month. It has been in the past, but it's not going the greatest because we've had more rain than usual. I guess it means we actually had rain in general. So we're out here in this field that you saw me mow at the end of that mowing video. That, uh, you know, just kind of surprise came to me. There's some pretty good sections out here. It, it doesn't all as bad as it looked when I mowed it. Or at least what you guys saw. So we're cleaning up some of the ugly spots with the round baler. And we don't have this view much where I'm actually like viewing it from the outside. Okay. You better not take one of these windrows. I didn't give them direction. That one over there. Okay, we're gonna try to square bale this. It's a uh, fairly nice orchard grass. There's some clover. I mean, it's not supremely clean. There's some stuff. Yeah. Okay, Dad's got a question. He's raking. I'm trying to direct him what we should and should not, you know, rake in the out here. Okay, it looks like the bale is netted and kerplop. That's definitely a view. I was gonna go in the woods. It's trying. It's a good, tight round bale. Oh, maybe I should do it like that. Nice and tight bale. Okay, well, so far we've made one, two, three, five round bales. It's essentially like second cutting, so it's not super thick. The orchard grass is bouncing back fast, but you can kind of see the patchiness of the orchard grass, and we can still see the clover down below. Yeah. Camera smudge. I good thing the sun's behind me so we can get a good view. Yeah, these two windrows are a little funkier over here. But it'll make a really nice round bale. I've never had orchard grass like this. Guess I got lucky that they wanted me to bale it. Or mow it for them. They're just gonna bush hog it off. Something will be happy to eat this. Got to pick through it. The animals have all day to eat. They don't have to go work a nine to five or anything. They kind of see, I didn't realize there was that much gap right there before. Must be getting close to a full bale. You can hear it like rattling back there. Looks like the net wrap took. Okay, they're our favorite part. Her block. And I've never had the opportunity to look back here so much before to see how much clearance there really is. Now he did roll forward some. Now there's plenty of room and this bale did have a good roll to it. Oh yeah, look at that orchard grass right there. We'll have a few windrows out in the middle. Maybe we'll make a hundred squares. Let's see if we got it started. Now I warned him sometimes on the pickup, if it doesn't start slow, it'll wad up. But he's off to the races. probably notice Nick's driving. I guess we've gotten past our uh, uh, debacle earlier in the hay season with the square baler. That, uh, you know, I guess things things break. People make mistakes. We're doing pretty good, though. We got him full of chew. He's happy. So that's all good. Just got to have a lot of tobacco products on hand. He's thoroughly filled the one side of the baler. I haven't seen him weave too much on this one. This window was a little fat. And all the dust is going that way. And it sounds like the bale's getting full. Because when the bale's full, I just noticed back here, that's when it's getting full. Well, look at 
the bail monitor when it comes around. Oh yeah, he's really close. He's very close. We'll see how far he goes. Hopefully he's not paying too much attention to me. There we go. We're gonna solid four by four. That middle line there, that's the four by four. That's like four and a half, that's five. Now when we dump the auto oiler, gets oil in the tube. It's filling up right now as it comes down, oil is gonna run back in. And it's gonna oil the chain. I know it works because when it sits in the barn, I'll have two oil spots on the floor. Now he took off pretty fast. Yep, and he's gonna plug it and we'll see how long that shear bar lasts, the uh, shear bolt. Yep, he's, uh, he did not start in first gear like usual. It's close. At least that, now we can see up close the product of the, not having the wind guard in. Creep it up a little bit. Well, what? You're probably fine, just get a small bit more hay, not much. Now every other bale he started in first gear with no problem. There we go, it sucked it in. Hopefully he learned the hard way on that one that he decided to start bales in first gear, which that's too slow for me that I would just feather the clutch for about 15 feet, uh, which isn't the easiest thing on a clutch, but this thing has survived years of round baling. We only make a couple hundred a year at most, so it's not like we're making thousands. And the last time I had a clutch is when Dad rebuilt the transmission 2,000 plus hours ago. See, the pressure, I've never watched the pressure, but when the bale gets full, it'll be almost up to 2,000, not 2,000, almost to 100. It's over 80 now. And we start about 35 to 40. It's like the net wrap took, the wind direction has also changed. It's snowing. I had a dream the other night after I mowed this field that it started to snow on the hay that I just cut. That was annoying. Okay, he's gonna be getting close. I heard the net stop. I hope the net stops. Please tell me the net wrap has stopped. Or else this thing is like over wrapped. Oh, shit. Well, we're gonna have fun. I hope you're wrong. Nope. Uh, yeah, you must wrap the one roller. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Nice. This happens every once in a while. I usually get down there with razor blades, but somebody said, uh, that we can somehow... Watch your fingers on, that's dangerous that we can just, oh, well that'll save me a lot of net wrap. It'll take about five minutes on rolling, but it really beats getting down there and cutting out with a razor blade. So this will save, oh, wow. Why didn't I think of this before? This, I, yeah, Jacob, you're supposed to be the smart one here. Well, I just read this on a hay forum on Facebook a couple of weeks ago about like John Deere's and baby powder in that rubber roller. And I never realized, I mean, <laughs> it's going to take me a few minutes, but it's a lot quicker than getting down there with the razor blade and wasting all that net. Then I'll have to maybe restart this. But this is, uh, this is much better than laying, see that's what broke the wind guard is that I was down there laying on it to cut the net loose. Oh boy. 
Yeah, this will give you some like wrist muscles though. Once I become Popeye the Sailor Man is rolling this thing back, I can feel it right in See, my forearm. See, that's the thing. Popeye has spinach, I have chew. Yes. That's what I run off of. I know, I already said something about that earlier. If you're full of tobacco products, you're good to go. Yep. Okay, I gotta remember how this runs. There, uh, there's, a, a there's a chart over there. It goes under the metal, over the rubber. Something like that. Through the woods. And there you are. I have to cut myself. Mm -hmm. At grandma's house, I take it. On the blade. Where's the blade? Where's the blade? Oh, there it is. It's out of the way. Good. Because you got it in the run position still instead of cut. It. Okay. It's through there. Now what you got to push. Oh, you can shoot from the top. You got to push this one back to create room. Or no, I did this backwards. I did this backwards. Way to go. I know. I went over instead of under, under. and over. Yeah. But at least we saved some net wrap. Yeah. And maybe 15% on our car insurance. What's car insurance got anything to do with it? I don't know. It's the whole point of saving. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Progressive. No, Geico. Geico. Oh, we're giving free advertising. We don't do that here. Yeah, we don't do free advertising here. None of that. None of that shit. Okay, now I got to get this spread back out wide and fed in. It'll kind of work its way out thanks to the end of this metal roll hay with that little corkscrew pattern. We'll stuff that in the hay so that's automatically going to start. It'll be back okay. to in a second. Okay, grab that bar and flip it up. That'll tension. And also take fingers off. Oh, going down it really will. Because if you don't have your finger out of the way, you'll catch it right there. And you'll be saying some not flip, so nice stuff. Flip that up. That tensions our rollers in the middle there. Okay. Okay, now we should be able to net the bail, no problem. Okay. Back to you. <sighs> okay. That was less painful than the last time I got it wrapped, and it does it randomly. I'm not super sure why. I think maybe I need to sharpen a uh, medic knife. There we go. See, it's full of it. it took a second or two. Dun, 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 dun. That door really does collect dust really well. Let's see if he remembers about starting slow. Looks like he's shifting gears. Okay, going for first. Maybe by next season we'll get that wind guard welded up. But it's been like walls to the ball. Getting to the end of everything here just thanks to the rain. I've never done it before so much, but I'll probably be trying to make hay at least until October 15th. And at that point, you know, this video might have made it out. Maybe. It's a little scary. He's got new glasses. Hopefully he gets most of the windrow. So how do you like round bailing? Uh, I know one thing. That square baler there hates me and I hate that square baler. Well, this thing tried to have its moments with you too. Getting the net wrapped all wrapped up there. Yeah, it is. There's the thing about bailers, they hate me and I hate them. Well, I mean, nothing's broken. Yeah, I'm fine. We'll see how quick I can tear one of them up. And only minor inconveniences so far on the round baler. Not bad. We're doing okay. Let's see, I brought TR86 home and how many malfunctions later? Now we'll 
test your coordination. Look how big the bale is. Can you net on the move? Ow. Let's take some coordination to be able to net it. You can probably cut it. Okay. And a dump right at the end of the windrow. Couldn't have placed that any better. The point was not to do that and not have to stop, but I'll go roll that one out of the way for you. Don't forget to slow down here. Okay, so that might have really tested his coordination. But we didn't run into anything. We didn't run into like trees or mud. There we go. It's looking like, is it gonna suck it in? It's working. Oh yeah, there it goes. Let's go look at this placement over here. Yeah, right at the end of the window. I mean, couldn't have placed it any better myself. And they're so round, we can do this one-handed, no flat sides. That one's maybe a little extra four by four. But it's pretty hard to get to go the other way. So we're gonna say it's very round and not too light. I know, I can't believe I'm letting him uh, run free with the round baler. Uh, but with enough guidance, uh, threatening to beat him over the head, um, well, we can, we can, uh, we can make it work, I guess. I can hear it. It sounds like he needs to make a bail soon. And I need to look into a couple bars, look a little bent. Oh yeah, it looks really full. Okay, maybe, there he goes. Yes, yeah, so with enough guidance, a few whacks over the head, we can get Nick to do almost anything. And enough to chewing tobacco, that, that helps. And now see, now that one rolled good. That one was just gunning it for the trees if we could see that from a distance. Not that I plan on getting a job anywhere, but uh, yeah, Nick's definitely good training for if anybody wants to become a manager somewhere, they can say they've, uh, taught Nick how to do something.